Hello there. Welcome to the learning of engineering bit tutorials. So in this video lectures, we'll try to see a combined bending and torsional loads on a, a shaft. In the previous video lectures, we have seen a solid shaft is subjected to bending as well as the torsion and we derive the governing equation. On that basis, we can find out the, the resultant component of these two bending as well as the torsion. Now, the same principle and methodology we are applying to find out for the hollow shaft. As we know, the hollow shaft is going to be here. We do have the inner diameter as well as the outer diameter. And there we can see the end cross section is going to be visible like this. The purpose of this design hollow shaft is to reduce the weight of the solid shaft, right? So then how these bending forces are going to be coming? As we know, the torque is going to be coming. Then we have seen the shear stresses are how they are going to be developing. But how the bending stresses are going to be coming? That's because of the moment. Suppose this shaft we are using to transmit the, the power from one shaft to the another shaft. We are inserting the gears or pulleys or maybe the chain drives we are using to transmit. So that time what will happen? That the load is going to be coming transversely and automatically that the bending loads are coming and the bending stresses are going to be developing. That's the graphically I have illustrated here that's going to be the torque as well as the bending moment over here. So then in this combination the governing equations which we developed for the bending moment as well as for the, the torsional stresses it is not going to be valid. So we need to club together and we need to get the resultant component. So for this one R0 I am going to be calling here the D0 by 2 here means the outer diameter, outer radius, inner radius. Right? And we know the shear stresses are developing that is because of the a torque that is equal to T by J into R0 we have taken. That means the maximum shear stresses are going to be existed on the outer the diameter of the shaft. That means outer surfaces are going to be subjective. That is why the maximum shear stresses are going to be here. And similarly the bending stresses also going to be there because the loads are coming that is because of the gear transmitting the power or the pulley are going to be transmitting the power. So then in this case what happened we do have the governing equation that we modified according to the requirement of here. So that is sigma b is equal to m by i into r0 that is going to be outer radius and here i is nothing but the moment of inertia. So that moment of inertia we can calculate it and here j is nothing but the polar moment of inertia. Once we are going to be substituting the two the three uh, the theories of failures one is going to be the major that is the the principal stresses theory for one for the major second one is going to be the minor and third one is going to be the maximum shear stress theory suppose so if i am going to be substituting these values in this equation so then what happened finally i am going to be uh, the reading out here is the the maximum stresses are going to be here in this case the maximum shear maximum the principal stresses are going to be developing that is equal to 16 d naught by pi into d to the power of 4 minus d i to the power of 4 that is into m plus the square root of m square plus t square. Now we can see in the governing equations either the torsional loads or the bending loads are going to be there. But in this case what will happen these two are going to be existed in this equation that is why the theories of the failures are the main importance is that to find out the resultant components when the two forces or three forces are going to be acting on that system. And second one is going to be the, the minor principal stresses. So in this case the minor principal stresses are going to be that is going to be same we are going to be using but instead of here the plus we are going to be getting the, the negative that is going to be 16 d naught by pi into d to the power of 4 minus d i to the power of 4 in bracket m minus under square root of m square plus the t square. So in this case also we are going to be getting here is the, the two the loads are going to be coming in a single equation. So and the third one is going to be the maximum shear stress we are going to be calling. So in this maximum shear stress what will happen we know that is going to be the maximum shear stress is equal to that is going to be the major. So the major minus sigma minor divided by 2 we are going to be using. By using this equation of this one and this one I am going to be substituting in this equation and then finally I got this part. So that is going to be tau max is equal to 16 d naught by pi into d to the power of 4 minus d i to the power of 4 into under square root of m square plus t square. So this way we are going to be the deriving the mathematical model to understand the behavior of the material when they are going to be subjected to the bending as well as the, the torsional forces. So as we know these the bending forces and torsional forces are going to be existed the maximum at their outer surface of the member. On that basis we derived this equation. 
I hope you are able to understand the concepts of the combined bending and tor uh, the torsional loads on a hollow shaft. So still you feel any confusion, please put in the comment section so that I can try to reach you out. Thank you.